Hey Windowers and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows 98. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Windows codename Memphis build 1525, the official Windows 98 Beta 1 build compiled on the 24th of June 1997, about 4 months after build 1400 which we explored in the previous episode. Build 1525 has accumulated many new features including a wealth of new system tools, more changes to Windows Explorer with the aim of further integrating the newfangled internet into the Windows shell and more. So without further ado, let's start. So here we are at the desktop of Windows Codename Memphis build 1525, but before we explore the features here, I want to do what I usually do, which is to briefly go back to the setup procedure that I showed you at the beginning of the video and talk about the changes there. So the first thing you may notice is that now, compared to build 1400, there is now a new background image and the old background image was removed uh, just after build 1400 in build 1410. And we now have the addition of a clouds graphic, which was introduced in build 1434. Additionally the sidebar has now changed from grey to black and this came in around about build 1434 again or it could have been just before this. And finally there is a new stage in setup where it checks the hard drive and this debuted in build 1511. Now coming back to the desktop and you may have noticed straight away some changes from build 1400 so the first one is that we no longer have the show desktop button in the bottom right hand corner that has now been removed as indeed would remain the case um, when windows 98 was shipped now you may also notice that in this build the quick launch bar that usually appears next to the start button is no longer present however it is present you just need to turn it on manually so if you go into toolbars here and click on quick launch you'll see it actually appears on this side of the taskbar and here is where that show desktop icon is so it's no longer hard coded into the taskbar like it was in build 1400 but the well some of the functionality is here so you don't have any of the right click functionality but you do have obviously the show desktop functionality itself and this is how this would remain in future versions of windows until windows 7 at least so some other changes are in the start menu we now have a different banner on the left hand side compared to build 1400 so this one says memphis now between build 1400 and this build there was a period of time where this said memphis beta 1 but now it's just simply become memphis and since we're in the start menu we now have some new start menu items to look at so the first one is this memphis help desk this is uh, what appears to be web-based help so you can see you've got local help, search your computer for answers to your questions, you've got web resources and look at the links at the bottom. So this goes to microsoft.com slash windows support. This one just goes to see windows help. Uh, and I imagine this would take you to the normal old fashioned 95 help files. And then you've got contact a support engineer, which if you look again at the bottom, it's a Dr. Watson thing. And then you've got a link to the windows update manager. So let's try all the links. So local help. There you go, you get the old fashioned help. Web resources, I mean, this is not gonna work. So there, yeah, there you go. I mean, that website won't even exist, I bet. Contact a support engineer. And again, it redirects to this winbeta.microsoft.com bug report webpage. Let's go back. Windows Update Manager, again, it's not gonna work, but yeah, it would take you to that update site. Now, if we go back to the start menu, there are a couple of other changes. Now we don't have links to internet mail or internet news. Instead, we now have Outlook Express. So again, this is new in this build. So keep my messages in program files, that's fine. So here we go, Microsoft Outlook Express. And uh, as you can see, it's not too different from the, from the released version. Um, but we'll have a chance to look at that in more detail in later videos in this series. But yeah, this is the basic premise of Outlook Express, the way it always was. So you've got your inbox, I've got an outbox, sent items, deleted items, and so on. So this actually replaces Internet Mail. If we go back to this Internet Explorer folder, there's now an update product link. So obviously it can't find any update components, but you can see it's called Active Setup Product Update for Internet Explorer. Now, there are some more new additions in the start menu and all of these are in system tools. So when I was first looking in this build, I noticed that there seemed to be a lot of tools in the system tools folder. So what I then did was I went back to build 1400 and Nashville, which is build 999. 
and I checked whether these tools were present in those earlier builds. And actually in Nashville, none of these things were present that I'm about to talk about. Some of them were present by build 1400 and I just missed them in the last episode. So let's have a look at all of them now. So the first one is the FAT32 converter tool, which again, wasn't in Nashville, but was in build 1400. It looks slightly different in build 1525. So this is what it looks like. And obviously it allows you to change FAT16 discs to FAT32. So it's just a wizard that you can click through like this. So then the next one is, um, so internet system update I talked about in build 1400, that was new at that point. The next one, and again, this was in build 1400, is the Microsoft System Information Utility, which is this, and you may recognize this, it still exists in Windows today. So it just gives you information about all of your hardware, basically. So let's go back. And the next one, um, so NetWatcher, Resource Meter, ScanDisk, those are nothing new here. The next one is Scheduled Tasks. So this wasn't in build 1400, so it appears to have debuted between that build and this one. And this, again, is still in Windows today, and it basically allows you to have certain programs or commands run on a schedule. So here we go, we can choose to run Calculator, for example, um, daily, or I don't know, when we log on, why not? Let's do that open advanced properties and you can specify more things here like comments and so on you can stop it after a certain time so lots of options with that so that is also new and let's go back because we're not finished yet so back to system tools so the next one is the system file checker which again when I checked was also in build 1400 and i would missed it so again this is still present in Windows today so you can scan for errors basically in your system files um, you can extract installation files from the disk and so on. And again, we've got some settings so you can have it back up, uh, create a log file, search criteria and so on. So that's all interesting. And then the last thing is again in system tools, and this is new as of, as of this build. So this has been introduced between build 1400 and this one, and it's called the windows tune-up wizard. Now there was something like this in windows 98, and I'm not sure if it was in 98, 98 second edition, or if it came with the plus pack to be honest, cause I'm just going on childhood memories here. So I'm not sure, but something like this with a very similar picture here did exist. And basically it's a place where you have access to scan disc drive space and disk defrag all in one place. So you can have any or all of these things um, done for you basically automatically. So as you can see, it ties into the new task scheduler and you may have noticed actually it's now appeared at the bottom since I've opened it. Um, so you can have it run on obviously on a schedule, so weekly or again when you log on or whatever you like. Um, you can change some settings for scan disk here, so you can have it automatically fix errors, for example, change it to a thorough scan. There are no settings for these because you just get this error message when you click it. So the schedule settings is only available for scan for disk errors in this version. So it's implying that it's not finished at this point and the same there. You can run it now and obviously you can click through and have that saved in your scheduled tasks. I'm not going to do this now. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, I don't know if it actually did even save that. Let's check. It did, yeah. So there you go. You've got tune up, apps defragment, tune up, clean up wizard, tune up, scan disk, and then the calculator the task that I added earlier. Now, one more thing in the start menu that's new that I don't recognize is um, this. So WBEM security, security editor. I don't know what this is. I've never seen this before. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's an internal thing at Microsoft. I'm not sure if anyone knows anything about this. Please uh, let me know. Let's just see if I can type anything in and get it to do anything. No, don't think so. Now there is actually one additional system tool that is new again when I check as of build 1400. So again, I'd missed it there, but it doesn't appear to actually be in the start menu. It's actually in this accessories folder in program files and it's called SM tidy. And if you double click on it, it's called the start menu organizer wizard. Now I don't remember seeing this in 98, although through researching online, it does appear to actually have been a tool in 98 if my sources are correct. But again, if anyone wants to actually check this and again, 
let us know in the comments that would be great so but yeah this is definitely not in windows 95 so um the purpose of the start menu is to start programs utilities and other files click the initial changes you would like to make so you can remove broken shortcuts remove empty folders and then if there's only one item in a menu move it up a level so let's see what happens when we click through this so um so yeah look you can move your unused shortcuts to old shortcuts so this is shortcuts that you haven't used at all in the last three months so that's interesting so okay let's do that shortcuts to readme and help so some programs put shortcuts to readme and help files on the start menu this can delete those this would have been amazing if i knew about this if this was actually 90 i would have loved this because i hate all these extra shortcuts you get to help help files and stuff let's delete them then okay further customization if you would like to further customize you can add or remove other items by completing this wizard this is amazing well this is just the add shortcut wizard what does this do this takes you to this thing where you can remove stuff okay fair enough and finish and it crashed good old windows we love it now let's move on to explorer and look at the changes there so firstly i'm just going to maximize this window so we've got plenty of space to play with so the first thing you might notice is that we now have this new toolbar called links which again if you're used to using windows you'll probably recognize it was in xp for example so it just contains all of the web pages in the links folder in the bookmarks or favorites list in internet explorer so again this is not going to work but if you click one of these it would theoretically take you to the web page but this vm doesn't have an internet connection so that's links now also we have some new customization options so in the view menu we can now turn on or off the toolbars as well as this new option for text labels so it's text labels now you won't see anything because i've not turned on the toolbars yet but let's put on standard buttons and then address bar so it's all a little bit all over the place but let's move these down here and then we'll put links over there so this now looks a bit more like windows 98 in fact i think this is underneath isn't it yeah there you go so a bit more like the final release of windows 98 so you have the ability to add these text labels so let's just turn them back off again so you can see the difference so this is a bit more like um, build 1400 which didn't have text labels as an option and now we've got the labels now there's also an option called view as a web page now this was in build 1400 and the option was called web view but i couldn't get that to work in that build now i have seen some pictures online of the apparent windows explorer in build 1400 with web view turned on but for some reason it wasn't working when i tried it however this option works so if you turn on view as web page you now get this new look explorer which is a lot like what it was in the final release of 98 and then in future versions of windows so you've got this sidebar on the left hand side with this clouds background and then this really ugly section which i'm guessing is not meant to look like that so uh oh it's actually not available in this folder that is very strange so apparently you can only do it in certain folders such as my computer so yeah if you click on something you get some information here which is basically the same as what you get in the status bar so you've got size of the discs same with the cd-rom you've got some information about the folders so printers use this folder to add and set up local or NAND printers control panel for example let's go in here and you can see it also works in control panel so now you've got some links to microsoft home and technical support so that's all good and yeah look it gives you information again this is all usually in the status bar so you can see it's basically the same as what you have down here but it just looks a bit nicer now another thing you can do which again is new by this build is add some browser bars so you've got search favorites history and channels so this adds a further sidebar to the left hand side so it's sidebar galore here sidebars of obviously they were very in obviously in the late 90s so you've got this search bar which works like like it does normally in internet explorer except that again there's no internet connection so that would obviously allow you to search online you've got the favorites bar that you can add here where you can obviously view your favorites we've got history which will let you view, obviously view the history and then channels um so this i'm not sure about i don't know if this was ever uh seen through 
I mean, I know there was a channel bar in Windows 98. I'm not sure if that's a similar idea to this, but it's a sidebar here in Explorer. Again, I've said it a few times in this video, but if you know anything else about this channel bar, uh, please let us know in the comments because it is quite difficult sometimes to find reliable information about features in these early builds especially considering that you know 90 is an extremely old version of Windows it's from such a long time ago um, so yeah that's interesting uh, those new Explorer features very welcome and obviously like I was saying in the national video and in the video for build 1400 this is all part of the strategy to bring Windows Explorer and Internet Explorer closer together to have the functions basically merged so that you could easily switch from anything on your local disk to anything out on the World Wide Web and vice versa so yeah that's all good and that's it for this episode everybody so as usual thank you for watching and if you have any questions or comments or if you found anything else in this build that I've missed or if you have any corrections to anything I might have made a mistake on then please do get in touch in the comments below and again as always I will look forward to seeing you in the next episode I will see you then Bye.